Is 240 Hertz really worth it for CSGO? Yes. One of the most reoccurring questions in my streams, videos, and on my socials. The technical aspects about it and much more has been covered fantastically in detail by LTT. I highly recommend watching his videos on the topic. This video, however, is about my experience as a competitive FPS player for over a decade. Thanks to NVIDIA for sponsoring this video. Frames win games, a topic that will most likely not go out of date anytime soon. I mean, 360 hertz monitors and much more is already around the corner. I'm excited. Let me introduce myself first to all of you. Hi, my name is Kevin, alias Tweedy. That is just a boring abbreviation of my surname. In 2001, I started messing around with Counter-Strike 1.6. With the release of Counter-Strike Source in 2004, I started playing FPS games a lot more and got my first PC. With the first beta, I switched to CSGO at the 1st of December in 2011. The only game I played a lot besides CSGO was PUBG. I've competed in some part teams in the Counter-Strike Source and won some big dollars in PUBG alongside some pro players. Over now nearly 19 years, I've accumulated around 20,000 hours playtime, most of it from CSGO. I used to work for MTW and was the former creative director for NIP. Worked in gaming as a creative director and marketing as well. Started YouTube in 2007 and Twitch in 2011. I've attended over 60 offline events all over the world in this time, you can basically say CSGO is my life. That's my experience in a nutshell, so it's nice to meet you. So what is the topic Frames Win Games all about? The fundamentals basically tell you the higher FPS and the higher Hertz help you tremendously in video games, especially in CSGO. Which is quite obvious for most of you. FPS and Hertz both impact the responsiveness and therefore the player's performance heavily. The animations are smoother, easier target tracking. You minimize the distracting effects, ghosting and tearing. The system latency is better, you see players earlier, which borderline gives you a better reaction time and much more. For this video, I've talked to a lot of people ranging from professional player to competitive casual player to casual player. Upgrading to high hertz or FPS is a big investment, as this technology does come with a decent price tag on it. Not a single one, however, did regret his decision to upgrade. It's instant satisfaction and everyone felt the investment was justified as soon as they did it. Here's my experience. When I first got upgraded from 60Hz to 120Hz, it felt amazing. Within a split second, you realize just how much better gaming will be from now on out. The next upgrade came a few years after to 240Hz. The upgrade is something you however not notice at first sight. Over time when you switch back and forth between the displays, in my case it was playing from other setups at events, something I'll touch on later, you just then realize how much of an upgrade 120Hz to 240Hz really is. I'd say you can replace 120Hz with 144Hz any day, the difference between those two shouldn't really be all too big. But I never owned a 144Hz monitor myself. What comes with 240Hz and high FPS? First, the consistency. It's all of course smoother, makes it a lot easier to control your recoil of the gun, which all of course impacts your overall performance. Let me reach a little here. Due to the performance of the player being consistently better, it impacts the viewing experience of an audience as well. Therefore, the technology impacts the show that esports is, or the entertainment that a content creator looks to provide. Less distracting elements brings you a better focus, better reaction times as mentioned. You actually are able to eliminate a lot of random elements, which for instance makes your fast reactions like flick shots hit better. CS is all about timing. Now imagine due to the technology, you already see the enemy earlier and have a reaction time advantage. 
The biggest factor of CS, which is timing, is turned in your favor by a few percent. I also noticed that I got enabled to have longer gaming sessions. I didn't get as strained as when playing on low hertz or FPS, which ultimately impacted my productivity and gave me better overall results for my goals. I think I could even go as far as saying that mental health is directly impacted by high hertz and FPS. Bad frames equals naturally worse performance equals bad mentality equals bad results equals bad feeling and so forth. We all have been there checking our FPS, noticing a few less FPS than usual in our net graph. Even if it actually doesn't impact your play at all, just seeing your FPS dip a little bit makes your head spin, makes you lose confidence, and you start to feel bad, which then negatively impacts the outcome of your game. Let that sink in. And here's how I experienced the importance of high hertz and FPS on two memorable occasions. Copenhagen Games 2012, the top players from all over Europe did bring their CRT monitors, which are these big ass things, to the events themselves as they provided a high refresh rate. Broadcast the Real 2018, a $300,000 stream in PUBG tournament in the US. I felt I was lagging. I was really stressed out over it. I couldn't play properly. After investigating the issue by switching out several times the monitor and PC, I got told we are playing on 144Hz instead of my 240Hz that I'm used to from playing at home. That was the moment where I noticed how much of a difference 120 144Hz to 240Hz really is. One can only imagine what 360Hz will bring later this year, let alone the possibility of having a thousand Hz sometime in the future. Oh boy. Now I've taken the time to talk to casual players, casual competitive players and professional players and compile their answers for this video. The casual player plays games to unwind from their daily routine, relax and enjoy it just to have fun. Now imagine all the clutter and elements from bad FPS and Hertz. Gaming not being smooth. That would make it all too stressful, being the exact opposite of what a casual player looks for. I've had that in my earlier years. Sometimes I felt worse, walked off the PC with a headache, or simply couldn't even play longer than an hour without realizing a major cause of it being my outdated setup. The competitive casual player, as an example, face it puck players or even your matchmaking tryhards. We all ultimately play to achieve at least something, but also not miss out on the fun aspects. Most people really don't mind to win or to lose, but the individual performance got to be good consistently. We are all looking for some sort of accomplishment whether it be our global lead rank, our face it elo, or our statistics. So the individual performance impacts our happiness and current or even long-term mental state. No proper FPS or hurts limits us in trying to chase our desired goals. It makes the role also less enjoyable to begin with. Now the professional player is a different kind of beast. He depends on the technology being the best it can be. It's his livelihood. The information that gets fed to you via Hertz and FPS arrives quicker to you. You'd even miss out on some information simply because of bad FPS and Hertz. Picture yourself running out of an angle and just have a quick check left and right. Low FPS and Hertz results in ghosting and tearing, which might make you miss the enemy and result in a snowball effect to you potentially losing a round or even a match. You would have killed me. Due to the quick refresh rate, it's easier to track and aim at a target. Your aim will be better. Your concentration and focus level are directly impacted. The consistency is well. And we all know consistency is the key to long-term success. You prepare yourself for tournaments, you learn the mouse movement to what you see and try to memorize that the best you can. What you learned is what you execute on the stress quicker without thinking. Being quicker in an execution or a duel will make you win. You start with hand-eye coordination, wander to the physical coordination and get the muscle memory needed down. Now insert low FPS and Hertz in this thinking process and it suddenly gets random, distracting elements. Imagine not hitting the shots you should hit because of not having the technology to do so. Unthinkable for pro players. Without good frames, you're training for less 
or you're even training for nothing at all in the end. It should be on you as a pro player and nothing else. Therefore, the best FPS in Hertz is required. Oh, and uh, feel free to use the excuse the enemy has a 240 Hertz monitor or a few more FPS than you. It's a good one. I've used it a lot, actually. In conclusion, frames do indeed win the games on any level of competition. The technology that Nvidia pushes forward helps move players and the entire industry forward at the same time. Better consistent performance, better viewing experience, more fun for casual players, people and everything around it feels and gets better. The solid price tag that comes with the high hertz and FPS. If you spend a lot of time around video games, I highly recommend investing in it. You will not regret it. If you want to have a look at a few selected products that Nvidia put together for you, check the link in the description to their partner Alternate. You can also watch my setup video, it's in the description, and see what I use if you're interested. A small disclaimer at the end, having better frames won't magically make you a superstar, but it will definitely push you to be the best you can be and help you realize whatever you want to move to in the gaming sphere. That was it. I'd love if you share your thoughts in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, please do not forget to leave a like, a comment and subscribe with the bell so you will be notified when I upload new videos. Thank you.